Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and it's later than ever, but it is still here. The Hardware Bot Score Roundup, uh, weekly score roundup, it's supposed to be. It's number four. Um, yeah, there's been some awesome scores posted to Hardware Bot, like, not really a week ago. <laughs> like, more than a week ago at this point. And, uh, we're gonna take a look at them, because they're awesome and, and worth checking out. So... Let's get right into it, starting off with Ralph's Super Pi 32 million uh, world record, which I kind of need to check that it is still the world. It is still the world record. Um, I mean, he did beat the previous one by almost two seconds, so you would hope that it would stand up relatively long at this point as people like, you know, the Super Pi 32M right now is sort of getting pushed to its limits for the 11th gen CPUs. And, well, Ralph is currently at the front of that race for the shortest Super Pi calculation time. Anyway, he's running it on an 11900KF uh, at 7.125 gigahertz on a Maximus 13 Apex. Everything's on L Well, everything that needs LN2 is on LN2. You're not going to LN2 your graphics card for a single-threaded CPU benchmark. Um, but, yeah, memory on LN2, CPU on LN2... Uh, running on a Maximus 13 Apex, um, Ralph is supported by Asus and Galax, so also the memory is Galax Hall of Fame. Um, and yeah, and you know, here, here's the screenshot. In terms of the memory settings he's running, he's running DDR4 4300 12, 12, 12, 16. Um, and so the 12, 12, 12 part is kind of normal, like 43... Like, I'm pretty sure I've seen screenshots of 4400CL12 at some point in time. And of course, this is Samsung BDI memory because nothing else does TRCD this low at that higher frequency. Um, but, um, yeah, like 43, like, this is up there. This is way up there. Like, if you can run 4200CL12 just at all, you have a pretty strong memory kit. 4300CL12 is just like a whole, like, that's a whole nother, you know um 50 megahertz of actual clock speed so yeah um anyway crazy high frequency for those timings and what's also really neat with rocket lake is that you can run incredibly low tras which for the longest time just wasn't possible on mainstream intel cpus because mainstream intel cpus just didn't support setting tras below 28 um, and for example, Ryzen CPUs don't allow you to set it below 21, um, but with Rocket Lake, apparently you can go as low as 16, um, which is quite something. Um, that, that's like DDR3 levels of, T <laughs> of TRAS timing at this point, except like way higher frequencies. Um, and TRFC 220, Northbridge, uh, Northbridge clock of six point, almost 6.4 gigahertz, so... Yeah, really, really pushing it. And also, this is synchronized with the memory controller because Super Pi 32 million, unlike some other benchmarks, is very memory latency sensitive. And so, so that's actually sort of why you run it as 43, like why, you know, something like 4300, 12, 12, 12, 16 uh, makes sense for Super Pi because you can actually, on, on, with the CPU on liquid nitrogen, you can actually run the memory controller at 2150 megahertz. Um, so you can get away with something like DDR4 uh, 4300. So, and other than that, uh, it's Super Pi 32 million is one of those old benchmarks that runs best on Windows XP. So if you're wondering why this doesn't look like Windows 10, it's because it's Windows XP. Um, and yeah, so that is uh, Ralph's 32 million, uh, Super Pi 32 million world record. Um, and yeah, congratulations to him on the like literal world record <laughs> in this benchmark. And uh, let's move on to the next score, another uh, world record set by Ralph in a different sort of memory-bound me benchmark. This time it's Geekbench 4 single core, the pretty much the exact opposite of um, Super Pi 32 million. I mean, it is a single core benchmark, it's literally in the name. Um, however, you can run this on Windows 10, um, as you can see. And also, this favors memory bandwidth above everything else. So instead of going for, you know, super low latency with something like 4300 12, 12, 12, you go for maximum memory bandwidth with 5400 15, 14, 14, which isn't really much of a timing difference. But the thing is, there is quite a latency penalty for going from 
uh, well, having the memory controller running in sync with the memory to having the memory controller running at half the speed of the memory. Um, yeah, so, you know, you, you lose some, like, you lose a bunch of latency on that, but the ba the memory bandwidth gains are so massive. Well, the, the thing is, like, Geekbench just straight up doesn't care about memory latency that much. Like, it, it, even... Like, on any architecture, if you're running Geekbench, the memory test is just, like, you really want to be maxing out, like, going for memory bandwidth rather than, than minimum latency. Um, and yeah, so this is, like, the upper limits of what's possible in terms of DDR4 memory bandwidth right now. Um, and then in terms of the Northbridge frequency and the core frequency, this is actually clocked a little bit lower because while single core, uh, Geekbench 4 single core is... Uh, like the, the score that's being considered is the single core score. There is a multi-core component to the Geekbench 4 just benchmark, and you do need to finish that part. So you unfortunately can't run as high clocks for a truly single-threaded benchmark like you can for Super Pi 32 million, because Super Pi 32 million never runs more than one thread of, of stuff. Um, Geekbench, on the other hand, well, when you hit the multi-core part, like, your CPU is going to be running four thread, like, is going to end up running four threads of work, and so you can't really run as high clocks as you could for, for SuperPi. Also, um, disabling cores and threads for all of these, like, low core count benchmarks is just a matter of, like, hyper-threading hurts single-threaded performance, just because of how it works. And you don't want unnecessary cores running. So I'm assuming Ralph's best core on this 11900K... Wait, it says 11900KF and it says 11900K in CPU-Z. Oh, well, that m might just be a bug. Anyway, um, oh, wait, and it says 11900KF down here. What a mess. <laughs> like, right here it says KF, and then at the very top it's just K. Oh, well, whatever. I, I, I was not aware that that's a thing. Um, either way, the where was I going with this? Right, like, so basically his best core would be, like, core 4, and so it doesn't make sense to, to like, run, or, well, core number 3, because cores are numbered from 0 usually. But, um, yeah, the fourth core is his best core, and so, you know, you would run with four cores enabled. Though, uh, if you had a CPU where, say, only three, like, your second, like, one of your earlier cores was the best, then you could run with even fewer cores. Um, yeah, anyway, um, so Geekbench 4, a uh, single core record, and I should also refresh this one, but I don't think it, this one, I don't think this one, this score, yeah, no, <laughs> he's still at the, st he'll, still first, um, for Geekbench 4, single core, so, yeah, congratulations to, to Ralph on the, t the, the two, uh, world records, and let's move on to the next score and the next score is Bisso Bisso's 3D Mark and I, I'm gonna have to refresh every single one of them just in case um yeah it's Bisso Bisso's 3D Mark Port Royal single GPU top score so Port Royal is kind of a neat benchmark not a benchmark I've ever run but I just think it's neat that this is one of the few GPU benchmarks that you can get away with running the CPU on water cooling because a lot of the other benchmarks like say the 3D marks you need to run well other 3D marks not like this is a 3D mark but you know if we say like Fire Strike or Fire Strike Extreme or uh, Vantage or Time Spy like for all of those there's a CPU test in them and you need like a high CPU score if you want the top score in the rankings uh, this doesn't have a CPU test, so you can just run the CPU on regular cooling and put all of your effort in maxing out the GPU. And Bisso Bisso is, well, very, very good at running that 3090 at crazy high speeds. Because he's doing 2850 on the core and 1469 on the memory. Um, literally, well, the, not the highest core clock of any 3090 to ever run Port Royal, but the thing is Port Royal is a ray tracing benchmark, and it is my understanding that, uh, once you get into the really high core, like, into the very high core clocks, um, the core actually ends up being very memory bottleneck. Like, it needs a ton of memory bandwidth to perform its best, and so... Yeah, 2850 with 1469 memory, well, beats everything else because the only other card that, like, the only other cards running that kind of core clock aren't anywhere near on the memory clock. So, obviously, the, the card with the massive memory clock speed advantage uh, gets into the lead there. Um, and, yeah, and 
Unfortunately, like this is not like I don't have much experience running 3090s. He is using a a, a 3090 Kingpin edition. The 10900K is just 5.4 gigahertz. Well, just 5.4 gigahertz, and, and it's running 10 cores, 10 threads, which kind of makes sense because for again, like hyper threading hurts single threaded performance. If you're not running a multi threaded benchmark, and you don't have like a super low core count CPU, hyper threading probably isn't do give it, doing you any favors. Um, and then Maximus 13 Apex for the motherboard, though the motherboard's not, like, really that relevant in this test. Also, that is an interesting approach to cooling the, the VRM on the card. I'm surprised he doesn't have a second fan, though, because there is, a like, half the voltage, reg like, V-Core regulator is on the other side of the card. Um, but yeah, this actually makes perfect, like, doing this is perfectly reasonable because, uh, well, the back of the PCB is going to act like a heatsink for the power stages, too. So there's no harm in, in having a fan sandwich around the card like that. So, yeah, anyway, um, you know, Bissot was a, a, like, solid score right there. And what's also really interesting is that um, Bissot Bissot, and I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, uh, is really new to at least Hardware Bot. I don't know if he's, like, overclocked on LN2 in the past or anything, but he certainly has a, like, this is a very new hardware bot account. So, what a way to make an entrance. Because this is not the first time he's had the 3D Mark Port Royal World, a single GPU top score. Uh, this is actually the second time, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, you know, m makes an account this year and gets a, you know, get, like, basically manages to get the top score in a, in a rather competitive GPU benchmark on a very hard to run GPU like 3090s are not easy cards to to max out they pull a stupid amount of power they love to lose contact with their thermal paste and like you really need to dial them in so and you have like slightly more voltage sliders than you would have on say some other GPU architectures and they are actually important so um yeah very very impressive score and like what a way to make an entrance to at least hardware vault because again i don't know if he like like it's really like it's hard to believe that somebody just picked up ln2 one day and just bam world record but um at the same time it's like if you know it like there's a method to this right so it's just like if you follow the method anyone should be able to learn how to set world records assuming they also have you know a card capable of doing that and well he's running a kingpin edition of course the card is capable of doing world records, right? Like, it's not much other, co like, there's not much other competition for, for 3090s on LN2. It's like, you've got Hall of Fames and you've got Kingpin editions, and that's basically it. So, yeah, anyway, uh, very, very impressive score. And so congratulations to Viso Biso on the 3D Mark Port Royal uh, single GPU first place. Anyway, now let's move on to not... Not, not a, as highly ranked score, but a score that I personally find extremely interesting. Uh, quick news, SuperPi 32 million, fifth place finish, with an 11900K at a little over 7 gigahertz. And what I find so cool about this score is the OS that Quick Mew is running it on, and the fact that he isn't, like, 30 seconds slower than everybody else in the ranking. Um, actually, it's not quite that bad, but, like, the penalty for running... Like, with some CPUs, um, or I'm not even sure if it's CPU-specific. It might just be, like, some, some things changed over time, but, like, the I don't bench Super Pi 32 million enough. To, to really know this. I just know that I have SuperPi 32 million scores that I've posted to some rankings where I am like 500 megahertz above everybody else around me. M and mostly down, and that's mostly down to the OS, uh, OS I'm on. So like I'd have a CPU running the benchmark at 6.6 .6 gigahertz getting beaten by people running 6.1 gigahertz, which is not great. However, um, apparently for at least 11th gen, uh, you can totally get away with running Windows 10 because this is a top five score in the world for Super Pi 32 million on Windows 10. Like, yay! I, you don't, you no longer need to run Windows XP to get like, you know, you're probably not going to get to the very top of the ranking, but you're not going to be at like, you're you're not going to be losing a bunch of time. Um, to like just to the just to the operating system that you chose because that used to be like with with a lot of other CPUs like that is actually a major problem where it's like you run it on Windows 10 and it's just way slower than it should be. Um, 
So yeah, that's that's the part like I'm really excited about is like, oh, you can actually be competitive in SuperPy 32 million without having to to get Windows XP working. So that's neat. Um, other than that, also he's just running. I th think some of the highest like one of the highest memory frequencies in like synchronized memory controller mode of any 11th gen chip I've seen so far so that's 2283 um, with 13 13 26 and you know the memory controller is synchronized to that but he also included a picture of 2400 synchronized which is um, yeah, that's ridiculous. Now, obviously, I he evidently didn't run this. Um, also, the fact that this is taken with a phone and not a screenshot makes me suspect that it froze when he opened CPU-Z. But, um, because that's what you do when CPU... Because you can run into that, where you open up CPU-Z, go like, whoa, my clocks are great, and then it just locks up on you, and then, yeah, so that, that's when you pull out the phone and, and take a screen... Uh, take a picture that way because uh while well, you're not going to be saving a screenshot anytime soon so but it's still just really cool to see that this this kind of frequency is even bootable um because yeah with in with the synchronized in synchronized memory controller mode like the running high frequencies is really hard um anyway other than that of course everything well cpu is on ln2 ram is on air cooling um and it looks like he's using a socket heater, and I'm basing that off of the fact that he's running very little insulation. So either he's running a socket heater, or he's extremely brave. Um, I would be more inclined towards he has a socket heater, because you, like, you don't really want to be risking a Maximus 13 Apex, and, uh, you know, a... Like, that. this, is, this looks like a solid... Well... Okay, well, 2415 isn't really that that hard. Um, but uh, 2283.13, like, this, that's a solid kit of memory. Um, actually, what is that? That's like 4460, right? No, that's way more than that. That's like... Wait, that's like 4560. Yeah, so that is a, that's a great kit of memory. Like, you do not want to be risking a good kit of memory in a board just... For, for like so yeah he's definitely running a socket heater because there's like no insulation here and you can get away with that with a socket heater because it prevents the ln2 pot from just sucking the heat out of the entire rest of the board through the cpu um so yeah anyway um yeah this is just a really really cool score where it's like oh you can you can now bench super pi 32 million on on windows 10 and also it's just cool to see these kinds of memory settings being done on 11th gen admittedly on liquid nitrogen like on 10th gen you could do this at ambient um assuming you had a strong enough memory kit well you couldn't do the tras 26 because that doesn't work on 10th gen but um, other than, like, the frequency and the, pro like, T TCL, TRCD, TRP, you could do that, but, um, you wouldn't be get like, yeah, but, so, anyway, I don't know where I was going with that, but, um, yeah, really awesome score, and now, now I don't have an excuse when I try to run SuperPy32 million on Windows 10 and it doesn't score well, it's, like, I can't blame the OS for it anymore, it's just gonna be like, my settings are bad. Also, the benchmark now only lasts, like, four minutes, which makes it tolerable as far as I'm concerned, so that's cool. So, yeah, congratulations to QuickMew on, on, you know, the fifth place um, in, in SuperPy32 million, which is, like, still, like, that's a really good result, because this is a very competitive benchmark and a very difficult benchmark, because it is, like, all about core speed and all about your memory settings. So it is a very, very difficult benchmark, though I'd argue some of the difficulty has been removed by the lack of requiring Windows XP. Um... Because, well, it's not really difficulty, it's just, like, annoyance, as far as far as I'm concerned. Like, the, the whole Windows XP thing is just, like, like you can get pre-made Windows XP installs that, that'll just run on modern platforms, but it's, like, I don't want to deal with that, so now I don't have to. <laughs> I can just use Windows 10. So, anyway, let's move on to the next score, uh, which is Royal Marox Unigen Superposition, and I should reload this one as well, yeah. Uh, Unigen Superposition 1080p Extreme, uh, triple GPU, uh, top score. Yeah, like, fastest triple GPU setup in Unigen Superposition 1080p Extreme. What's interesting about this ranking is that it is a mess, so I am not sure what's going on with that. Like, we have 290Xs and 290s just, like, m scoring way worse. 
I guess Crossfire wasn't kicking in properly on those. Or it was like, yeah, I have no idea what's going on with that. So this is a benchmark I really want to check out, though, because it's like, like big multi-GPU setups. I love big multi-GPU setups. I have multiple 290Xs. Like, I could, I am totally running this. Um, the main, main thing I'm wondering about, like, is why does the, like, so, like, he has a really great score here, and he does have Crossfire enabled on all three GPUs, so... Um, yeah, but the benchmark seems to only be detecting two of them, which is interesting. So it might be super buggy, but that's just like crossfire for you. You know, that's just, it's like if you've never worked with any multi-GPU setup, like it's, oh, it, it barely bloody works. Yep, that's multi-GPU. Um, it's like, why doesn't the driver see the last two cards? Or why doesn't the driver want to enable the extra two cards? Um... But anyway, a very, very solid result. I mean, he's not really pushing the CPU that much, but I, the, the thing is, is like, I think a GPU benchmark where you're not bottlenecked by the CPU is a good GPU benchmark, right? Because if you're, or a, C, or, a C, or a GPU benchmark where there's like a physics component, and so you need like a crazy CPU overclock is like, well, it's more like a general system benchmark at that point instead of just a GPU benchmark. So that's the other reason why I'm kind of interested in this benchmark, because it's like, oh, it looks like you can actually, like, you know, just overclock the GPU, because it's a GPU bench, not like a combined benchmark, like a lot of the 3D marks are, in my opinion. But anyway, um, yeah, he is running it on a X299 Dark with a 7960X, and then three 290X Matrix, uh, like Asus Matrix cards. Um, these are Matrixes from back in the day when they were still good. <laughs> Instead of having silly gimmicks attached to them while using the Strix PCB. Um, but uh, yeah, so 1220 on the core. That's actually quite hard on, on 290Xs. Admittedly, he has them on water cooling, so I think it makes it a bit easier, but not super easy. Especially since, you know, if you're running three of them, that's going to be still quite hard. And then 1500 on the memory, which that's just an unfortunate result of like, for what, it, like a lot of the Matrix cards use LP to VRAM, and it's not great. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's really unfortunate. Like, actually being able to run 1500 on LPDA, LPDA based 290Xs is kind of an achievement, because I've seen 290Xs that, like, if they have LPDA VRAM, they get stuck at, like, 1350, um, which sucks, which, like, really, really sucks. So, yeah, this is, this is a good result right here. Um, 1220, 1220 core on, on the core of a, of a 290X is just, like, that, that's quite hard under most circumstances, so, yeah, solid score, and I'm just a huge fan of big multi-GPU setups like this, right, I, but like, also when it's on HEDT, that just makes it that much better, <laughs> so, anyway, um, congrats to Royal Maroc on the triple GPU Unigen Superposition 1080p Extreme uh, top score, and let's move on to the next score in the roundup, which is Wittix and his CPU frequency uh, validation tops like top validation for the Core 2 Duo E80 E7200. Um, at 6.46 gigahertz. Now, what's crazy about this score is that the old record for this CPU is three is more than 300 megahertz lower. And if you look at the ranking for this chip, okay, it's like barely anybody is getting this chip to like six gigahertz. And then Wittix comes along in, in 2021, um, you know, pulls out an EP45 TUD3R from Gigabyte and just kind of smashes the record from... I, the thing is, the, the previous record isn't even that old. That one's from 2016. But either way, uh, smashes a, like, five-year-old record by 300 megahertz, which is insane. Like, that is a huge... Um, you know, like for, for CPU validation, that is a huge jump, uh, from, from the first place to the second place. So yeah, very, very impressive, like validation right there in terms of just like getting, like making that much of an improvement on the previous top score. Also neat that he didn't sandbag it because some like th that, that he didn't just pose like a hundred megahertz higher and keep the, keep the actual max validation to himself. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I can't really say too much about the score except what Wittix has commented himself down here, because, 
Yeah, I uh, I don't know much about m much about LGA seven seven five at all. Um, but yeah, it looks like the cold behavior is interesting, and there's a lot of voltages here. Um, but yeah, I, I don't do 775. I have no intentions of doing 775 because I have enough hardware to work on as it, well, enough hardware to play with more like. So technically it's also my like job. So anyway, enough hardware as is, I'm not getting into 775 because this is a platform where you do need to like bin motherboards a lot from what I've heard. And it's like, I'd prefer to not do that. Um, but anyway, uh, Wittix here has managed a very, very impressive CPU-Z validation on, on that Core 2 Duo E7200. E so, yeah, um, congrats to him on the score, and let's move on to the next one. And the next one is DDC's memory frequency validation on SDR SD RAM. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Actually, I do know. It's single data rate SD RAM, right? Yeah, single data rate SD RAM. I, that, that, like, I, I mean, I understand what those words mean. I still have no idea what that looks like. Apparently, it's green, and the memory chips look very weird. Um, no, I, like old memory chips used to look like this. This, this is ancient freaking technology to me. Um, I mean, this is half a gig. That's actually, like, that's pretty big, isn't it? I really don't know anything about this, like, this stuff, like, th this is just, like, again, to me, ancient freaking technology, um, but, um, uh, I get the, well, this is the kind of stuff where you're surprised that the motherboard still runs, <laughs> also, that heatsink's awesome, um, but anyway, yeah, so, you know, 2021, and I wonder what the previous record for this is, because, yeah, like, so, Pentium 4, um, yeah, I have no idea. What socket does this even use? I don't know. So, unfortunately, like, this is a really cool score because it's like, whoa, this, like, on the basis of, like, this is ancient freaking hardware as far as I'm concerned. And also, like, he beat the old record by 7 megahertz, which is quite a lot when we're talking about, you know, RAM doing 250 megahertz. <laughs> Now that's a pretty, like, m major increase in frequency right there. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, I don't really know anything about this. Even more so than 775. Like, 775 at least uses DDR3 memory, which I know something about. This right here is like, I didn't even know this is a thing. Like, yeah, that's like the first time I've ever heard of this memory. Um... Yeah, nonetheless, like, you know, an impressive score. And I wonder when the previous record is from. Oh, whoa. Yeah, so that's like a, a six-year-old record that, that he just beat there. Uh, when when did these CPUs release? This actually just has one core, right? Like, that's not partially disabled. I like again. I know nothing about this, but it's just awesome to 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 see like what I would can like. Uh, I'm gonna keep re repeating the word ancient. I feel like I've overused it already, but like, what else would you describe this as? This this is like beyond old by my standards. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, very impressive score. Um, you know, beating a record that's six years old is like always quite the achievement, and um, yeah. Congratulations to DDC on um, on on this this validation right here. Let's move on to the next score. Now, this is something I do actually know something about. Admittedly, it's a benchmark that I'm not that great at. Uh, Anthony, uh, I'm gonna just go with Anthony 06's uh, 3D Mark 11 perform, uh, by which I meant his his name. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But anyway, 3D Mark 11 performance with an RTX 2070 Super on air cooling, which, you know, like, I, if, personally, I would prefer it if there was, like, vault mods hanging off of that card because uh, the memory at the, at least at the very least, the memory should scale with voltage. And the core would probably scale a little bit as well. 
and then you probably want, well, actually, is it power limit? Oh, we can't see if it's power limited. And you'd probably want to disable the power limit with some, like, seer, like shunt mods or something. Which you might actually have those, because you don't need to really, like, make the, like, those don't need to be hanging off of the back of the card. You can sneak them under the heatsink. Um, but, um... Uh, yeah, this this right here, like this reason I ultimately like the the thing is, you know, air cooled card, and he's running twenty one ninety, which is quite the overclock for a twenty seventy super on on air cooling. But at the same time, it's like a lot of that's just going to come down to the silicon lottery. If you know, if you're not apply, like if you're not doing a bunch of modifications, it's just like and your cards on air cooling, like it's basically just like did you get lucky with the silicon? However, um, he also really pushed his CPU. So uh, in the end, I decided like, you know, yeah, you know, I, I feel like the, the GPU is probably like, I mean, that's a still a very solid 2070 super overclock, but it's just like it is on air cooling. It's not that hard <laughs> if you have a good card, which he evidently does. Um, however, the 5800X doing 4.973 gigahertz with 4,012, 11, 11, 24 memory. That's cool. Like, that, that is cool. And also, he's, he's beating some pretty serious com competition in this ranking. Um, you know, we have Shaggy SVK, who also no vault mods or power mods or anything on that card, but a water chiller, right? So, um... Yeah, you like the, like this card's absolutely insane. If it actually like if it maintains twenty one ninety on air cooling throughout the entire benchmark, which it probably doesn't, but if it gets close to doing that, that is ridiculous. Um, but anyway, because apparently this card, like even on the water chiller, just only does twenty one sixty. And yeah, like th eh. the GPU score seems to kind of reflect that. But yeah, like the thing is, ultimately, Anthony here is is getting the overall score, like the the score overall, because he really pushed that fifty eight hundred X, which boosts the physics score, and I think yeah, also he has a slight advantage in. Well, actually, no, he's losing slightly on combined. So yeah, that that fifty eight hundred X is working overtime to drag that card into first place. But hey, like. You know, if you if you get your air cooled card to beat a beat one on a water chiller, and and you're using a fifty eight hundred X to do it, like I can respect, like I I think that's neat, um, especially when you're running like the fifty eight hundred X at settings like this. Um, though that is a lot of V core. <laughs> that is that's wait, he's on that's just an AIO man. That is a really good fifty eight hundred X. Like, even with that much V-Core, like, that is a very good 5800X. Because that physics test is not light. That that physics test will quite happily go up to 32 threads. It's actually harder to run than, say, 3D Mark Fire Strikes, in my experience. Um, especially when it comes to memory stability. So, yeah, this is, this is a very, like, this is just a cool score. Um, in a not really that popular category, right? There's not that many uh, 2070 Super uh, scores getting posted. But, um, yeah, this is the kind of card that I would, like, the 2070 Super is one of those cards that I think would be really cool to, like, overclock if it weren't for the fact that right now 2070 Supers are insanely expensive even secondhand, right? But if it, if you could get 2070 Supers at, like, a reasonable price on eBay, then this would be one of those cards where I'd be like, yeah, vault mods, power mods, all, just all of the mods. Because um, these are just, like, like th this would be an interesting card to mess with. Um... So anyway, that's that's sort of why this score gets in here, and I did also pull up sort of salty cross. Uh, I'm not gonna try. I, I give up. I can't English anymore. I'm just, I'm just gonna give up on that. So yeah, and this is this is up against a 5900x. Much higher combined, but way worse physics, and losing the GPU. And his clocks don't look like they should be costing him that GPU score. Interesting. Yeah, so this this is a cool score ultimately. Like, yeah, it's being pretty heavily carried by that 5800X, but it's not like that 5800X isn't doing some very impressive things. So this gets into the roundup. Um, and the last score we're going to take a look at is Terraraptor's Super Pi 1M on the Core i3-2120. Um, because... I'm pretty sure I've featured the uh, Core i3-2120 in a uh, previous Hardware Bot Weekly Score Roundup. Um, 
Now, yeah, this CPU is apparently extremely popular with people who take DDR3 overclocking way too seriously. <laughs> so we've got a Maximus uh, 4 Extreme with two sticks of LPWBSC memory on phase change with the CPU also on phase change and, you know, pushing almost 110 BCLK, which is very hard. Um, so, you know, 3.62 on the CPU, and that gets you a SuperPi 1M calculation time of 10 seconds. So this is the SuperPi I actually like to run, but this one also prefers Windows XP. And apparently it also really likes this, like, silver theme. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's why this Windows XP looks so funky. But that is Windows XP. Also, 696 uh, timings. Well, the memory's on phase change. Like, what do you expect it to do? Um, with a TRAS of 21. One T command rate, of course. So, yeah. The only thing that I find kind of concerning is, like, this photo doesn't seem to show that the board is insulated, like, at all. Which I find very worrying. Because that is a lot of ice. And if any of that turns into water, then that could be one very dead motherboard. Um, but at the same time, this is a name I recognize. Um, so I assume this guy knows exactly what he's doing with this. And yeah, uh, may maybe this was a very quick run. Because you can get away with it if you don't spend like multiple hours sitting there on, on, on Sub-Zero with no insulation. Because that that's when you get the whole condensation just forming absolutely everywhere situation. Um, so, yeah, very impressive score, but this is, like, I think the CPU is actually quite, quite active. Yeah, like, I, this is literally a score that I featured, like, a couple, like, in the previous roundup, isn't it? 16, 12, yeah, so very active CPU, for whatever reason. Um, but, hey, like, it's really cool to see just, like, a, a really, like, a low-end locked Intel chip just get push to the absolute limits of like both ddr3 memory like for sandy bridge this is super hard because sandy bridge unfortunately doesn't have a lot of memory ratios um and i'm not sure if that's even made even work well no you you if you're on a z series board you still have all the memory ratios available you just can't change the cpu ratio so yeah so on sand like the sandy bridge memory controller is not great as far as i'm aware uh, i've not really run it that much myself um and so, yeah, this, like, th these these cores are just so cool to see. Because it's, like, locked, low-end, dual-core CPU getting overclocked way too hard. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is it for uh, this week's uh, Hardware Bot Score Roundup. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, uh, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up, uh, shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Um, and, uh, yeah, that is it for the video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.